Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I'm your host, Edward Sheldon, a.k.a. Dark Logos. And this is the show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Heroclix. All right. Uh, today is going to be one of those days. It's the days that you've been waiting for where we talk about a new set, new tech, new mechanics, all sorts of cool stuff that comes down the pipe. Uh, if this is your first time listening to me do a set review, uh, hey, uh, understand this is going to be broken up in multiple parts. Uh, on average, two. Uh, sometimes it's gone up to three. Also, be fully aware um, that if you've listened to part two and then listened to part one, you're probably a little bit confused. Just saying. Just saying. So uh, there, it's a two-parter. Uh, usually people will go and listen to part two since that's updated. That's that's the last one that comes out and then not listen to part one, which sort of blows my mind because I end up getting more views on part two than part one. Also, I'm not going to talk about every single figure. Just not. There's too many figures to do that. And I don't have enough time. So I'm going to talk about the ones that stand out or at least you're going to see on the meta scene. I am not going to focus on sealed mainly because in all honesty, uh, sealed is the luck of the draw. And depending on what you get, something might be good and something might be bad. Now, if I point out this is going to be killer and sealed, then OK, so be it. But I'm not going to go out of my way to be like sealed gold right here. OK, so I'm mainly focusing on your average constructed game. And if it's if it's above 300 points where it's good at, then I'll let you know it's better at 300 point uh, above 300 points or scales above 300 points. OK, with that being said, let's start off. Um, there's a bunch of weird mechanics in this set, and some of them are worth looking at. Some of them really aren't. Um, some of them aren't new uh, like the shifting focus, uh, cause all it is, is morph without morph's name, which is sort of sad because you have a mechanic called morph. You could have easily used that, but I guess they wanted it to indicate something else. All right. So let's, uh, look at, uh, Superman number one. Uh, and Superman number one is going to be huge on the meta scene for a couple of reasons. Number one, the shifting focus, uh, so you can be really flexible with him. Number two is defending the helpless. Uh, and him not being a flyer is really useful uh, because you're able to just, uh, for, for lack of a better word, just carry him around. And as defending the helpless uh, says, uh, Superman can use invincible, yay. Modify the defense value of adjacent friendly characters by plus one. This power can't be countered. So you have an uncounterable, you know, not the can't use shenanigans, sadly, but you have an uncounterable um, a def a plus one that you're giving to your friendlies. Now, here's where he's going to get good. If you find a way of getting him defend, uh, let's, you know, I know the Phoenix Force is retiring here, but let's let's just say we find a way of getting him uh, defend. Then you're talking about a 19D that can be carried around that has sidestep. That's also going to give plus one defense to everybody that's adjacent, which is functionally giving everybody a 20D. Uh, combine him uh, with Captain Marvel, our other main man. Um, you're giving your friendlies plus two defense, which is from range and up close. So on hindering uh, your cap, cap defense from range and probably you know, a 21 at that stage on average. Um, so this is just something to think about by far. This is a Superman that you're not going to see too much because he's not explosively offensive. Uh, but there's a couple of things that I think he can combine with. Uh, number one, uh, is a, a lantern battery, but those are probably going to end up getting retired here this year. Uh, and then uh, next off, I think that if if you play it right, uh, the the Quinjet and the Round Table could be really good for him. Definitely, when you start start talking about Hawkeye uh, giving him like plus two range, I think to like just surprise people uh, or Hulk getting charge uh, for a turn uh, that could also surprise people. So really cool. Uh, to start off, uh, really simple uh, uses at 90 points. Let's move on to number two, Superman. Uh, 
zero range. Uh, and, and again, I'm going off of the preview thread from AC Realm. So if I'm wrong on, on this, just let me know um, in the comments below. And I apologize. Uh, so the soup, we're looking at Superman number two. Uh, and really, the only reason we're looking at this is for one main reason is that he is a cheap sub 100 hypersonic speed attacker with 14 movement i did say that correct 14 movement 11 attack 3 damage there's tons of ways for him to get super strength in the game um again like id cards and whatnot um hold on wait take that back on id cards maybe not id cards uh i can't think of it if hulk gives super strength. i know hulk gives you charge i don't think hulk gives you super strength and I don't think Namor gives you super strength either. I know he, you know, he gives you plus one stats in water terrain and dolphin uh, movement. But uh, pretty much uh, with a 14 movement, 11 attack at three damage, you could just team him up with uh, Star Labs tech, two Star Labs techs, one give him precision strike, the other to TK him. And he's out there pinging for, you know, solid damage. Uh, I really like how he's set up just overall. And again, you have that flexibility of going to any of the other Supermans. And if you, you see your opponent has, uh, excuse me, if you see your opponent has some sort of, uh, whatchamacallit, precision strike or anything or, or like that, you can easily start uh, looking at uh, weight that's not Superman from the uh, Wonder Woman Superman set and then look, you know, look at uh, Superman Blue or something like that. There's, there's other options that you can sort of throw in there. All right, uh, moving on down the line, like my nanny used to say. Uh, she uh, Anyway, so we're looking at next is Batman, uh, number three, uh, Disappearing to the Shadows. Now, this Batman has Batman team ability. Not all of them do. Uh, then he has, of course, the shifting focus. He has improved movement, ignores hindering. He starts off with 11 attack and 2 damage with willpower. Now, I, I don't like the fact that he has willpower, but it also balances out the fact for his cost that you're not paying for uh indomitable now at three click at six clicks deep for 60 points this is really good so these batmans have a higher possibility of being in the meta than the supermans do so just just sort of keep that in mind because the ability to switch into an outwitter at any point in time uh for a free action not a power action just a free action that can be huge when it comes to control but definitely this like oh i'm gonna go base you know, Batman. Oh, well, psh, guess what, homie? Um, I have exploit weakness. How you like me now? Uh, four clicks of exploit weakness with 11 attack or a 10 attack. That's pretty good. Uh, Batman ally team ability. Also, he has the, uh, for his entire dial, he has hiding behind you. Give Batman a free action if he occupies hindering terrain or no opposing character could draw a line of fire to him. Uh, if you do, place him in a square of hindering terrain within six squares in line of fire. This This allows him to technically out of the shadows and punch people in the face like without out of the shadows -ing. so that's uh that's huge uh and I, I think a lot of people will underestimate um that ability okay so definitely meta worthy from mobility standpoint uh he does have the justice league keyword gotham city detective and batman family all which are really good keywords which you can build around uh so yeah all right let's uh move on down um you would say well why wouldn't i look at number four batman i the charge is nice but I, and the 12 attack is nice but i'd rather have the the better mobility in all honesty with the um the better mobility and knowing my damage is going to stick with the number three, uh, because that anybody that's played out of the shadows, Batman or the new Faust, uh, will know how strong that is to be able to like teleport to another square of Henry terrain. Um, it, it's really strong. All right. Uh, let's, uh, keep on going. And we're going to look at one of the first figures that I think that really do starts to change the game. And it's Mr. Nobody. His keywords are Brotherhood of Evil and Politician. He has a 10 movement phasing up front. Uh, you know, 
8 attack, special power, 17 defense, uh, super senses, and shape change, 2 damage. Now, you would say with stats like that, what's, what's so good about him? Well, let's look at his trait. It belongs to nobody now. When placing objects during the game setup, you may place your opponent's objects. Now, this is really huge for limited. Huge for limited. Uh, and in all honesty, it also, to an effect, uh, gimps uh, Rock of Eternity in Pandora's box. And uh, let me, it, it depends. I, I have to ask WizKids on the ruling on that one, though, on the Pandora's box, because technically those are relics. So I don't know if those count for objects or not. But here's here's what it is. If you play the Hulkbuster you know, leg or arm or whatever else. Guess what, homie? I I get to place that. Oh, you 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 have the cosmic treadmill. I get to place that. It's right here. Oh, you have all those ultra heavies with your super strength guy. They're in the corner. Okay, fifty five points, and I can just push them, and now I have a stealth prober on click two. Yeah, that's that's not a bad deal. Definitely for limited. Now I am saying for limited. When you uh, if we start seeing in constructed a heavy hitter uh, melee piece that has super strength, or somebody that starts doing weird jank with objects like Gizmo again, then yeah, this guy is going to be all over the place. Uh, until then, or if anything that at the beginning of the game is classified as an object. Now, if you start dealing with guys that generate objects and stuff, there's nothing you can do about that. But if you're, you're definitely talking about setting it up where your opponent, you know, has to put out six objects and you're just like, yep. I mean, put out three objects and you're just like, yep, put all your, I'm I'm taking the three objects. They're, they're over here now. They're mine. And him being six clicks deep at 55 points is a rather stout support. Steel energy to try to get back up there to click three, which is, yeah, you know, you know, okay. Uh, then he has a special power on his first three clicks, which is sanity is fle- uh, is a fleeting thing. Give Mr. Nobody a power action, choose an opposing character within range and line of fire and choose two slots on his dial that have standard powers. Until your next turn or until the chosen character's dial is cl- clicked, the chosen character can't use the powers displayed in those slots, but instead can use the powers as if the colors in those slots were exchanged. Now, here's where this becomes dumb. Da dum dum dum. Okay, this is this is a weird cheapo can't use but can use. Okay, so what what happens is is now I've changed the colors in your slots, your standard colors. So I can't do, you know, white because I can't. OK, but if, if it's like, let's let's just say uh, I'm looking at fighting a mighty Thor and, you know, my Batman is, is right next to Thor with his three damage. OK, 12 attack, three damage charge. OK, cool. We have the not so great Batman. All right. Now I'm dealing with Thor's impervious and Thor has super strength. Well, I can just swap that super strength in impervious and be like, now Thor has poison and energy shield deflection. Okay, so now my Batman with his 12 attack can get three damage through. Okay, and then the dial changes. And oh, guess what? He doesn't have super strength anymore. Oh, well, you don't have energy shield deflection anymore. And, and you have whatever you have standard now. And that's fine. That's a lot of control. Combine that with a sniper rifle. Combine that with a Hawkeye card. Hawkeye card or green arrow card. And we'll get into green arrow a little bit later. Shield. Which is sort of a waste on shield. But eh. And the fact that this guy isn't unique. You've got something here. Now, I will say this, at 400 points, you could start looking at two of them. At three, you really only want one. Um, Could you start seeing this with Orange Lantern Battery or, you know, all sorts of other stupid stuff like that? Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Is this an end-all, be-all, you know, silver bullet to all the other stupid stuff that's out there? No, because this does not stop things that happen in traits. This does not, you know, stop things that happen in special powers. But it is 
a nice introductory low level easy access can't use negation figure and you're also saying like you're stacking prob with this people prob and your prob is a minimum range six your little effect is best based on your range but again go back to that sniper rifle go back to shield go back to the hawkeye card go back to the green arrow id card you can bump up your range is it worth a bunch of perplexes depending on the tactical situation but overall this is not bad this is not bad and with 10 movement up front he can get into place now the thing is he can't push he really can't push. So if you're like getting the place, then push to go on to click two, then fine. But you really can't push. But the Sandy is fleeting is going to cost you a power action. So, you know, use it when you need to really do something. I'm just going to note, I like standard poison ivy. Um, not so much the prime. I'm, I'm just saying. Anyway, keep going on. Uh, next up is Booster Gold. Now, with Booster Gold coming in at a whopping 70 points, uh, one might think he should offer a little bit more. But he, he offers a good amount uh, for the meta right now. So let's... Uh, oh, I see what they did there. John Carter. His name's John Carter. Michael John Carter. Uh, anyway, John Carter is the guy from uh, Mars or whatever. He goes and saves Mars. But he's a spaceman. Anyway, but uh, going back, uh, stand back and watch a real hero. Beetle, Booster Gold can use probability control. Yay. 70 points, probability control, flyer, running shot, energy explosion, energy shield deflection. This is good stuff already. He may use it an additional time each turn if one of those uses targets himself or a friendly character named Booster Gold. So pretty much if you prob yourself or you're probing Booster Gold, uh, you can still have an issue, uh, instance of prob. Which is nice because technically you're getting a pocket prob for free. All right. So at 70 points, you're getting a lot of utility. Now, the problem comes in with Booster Gold is that really his top dial and click number three are what you're looking for because you have running shot. The rest of his dial, he, uh, you know, he's not that mobile. He has sidestep. Uh, getting super strengthened and power on his last two clicks. I'm sorry. This is not you you you're you're princess is in another castle booster goal because this is not a good idea you're 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 knocking down the wrong door now this could be useful you know with uh, a couple of your uh your lobos i think wasn't one lobo on justice league international uh but uh other than that maybe even the martian manhunter but uh, other than that no this is this is a bad idea bad idea danger will robertson danger uh dang it that's like something my parents will listen to um, lost in space anyway uh going on uh next up is iron now you might say well you you gave all this love for iron you're looking at iron and then you sort of crapped on but you, you said he's good booster gold what's really up now here here's the thing why this iron really beats the batman that i said 12 attack three damage is not that good uh first off you're not going to play a metal man without another metal man just 100 i'm just being 100 with you also at a 50 points getting pretty much paying 10 points per click is really good for five clicks uh beginning charge and charge full dial super strength up front three damage ending three damage completely fine uh then it says uh metallic property trait tinsels uh strength when uh iron is within three squares of another friendly character with the metalman keyword he can use sidestep and increase the damage dealt by his object attacks by one so he can't pick up an ultra heavy but if he picks up a heavy it's equivalent of an ultra heavy uh and if you play two irons together they can key off each other um you have to look at these as a buff version of the um what are those inhuman guys alpha primitives this is a buff version of an alpha primitive that's also a robot add in the robot keyword there's tons of robot shenanigans that you can do with ultrons and whatever else if you can't figure out what to do with more robots i'm sorry you have you not been listening for the last six months like really like we i've i've sort of like alley-ooped it to you to make a slam dunk on that so uh if if you're not on fire and and you don't have the the announcer you know telling you welcome to nba jam and, and you don't see why this is good I'm, i don't know what to tell you 
Uh, definitely when you start going to dealing with the other metal men, you will also understand why you want two of iron if you're a metal man fan. Uh, because you're, there's just so much stupid stuff you can do to make these guys broken. Uh, next up is 10. And this is the beginning of why this is broken. Uh, 10 is full dial uh, perplex. He's 50 points. I think all the metal men are like 50 points or something like that. He has force blast and willpower, which is nice because uh, iron does not. Uh, he has a standard uh, two damage the whole dial, which is, yeah, with the nine attack, which is, man, like you could have, I would have taken a lower attack for one more click of life for that point value or a slightly higher range. I, I would have taken that. But with Perplex, you're going to get a minimal range of six anyway. Anyway, going on, uh, metallic property, joining others. When 10 is within ten, uh, within three squares of another friendly character with the Metal Man keyword, he can use sidestep. And when using uh, Perplex, he may modify the chosen character to accept damage uh, uh, value, chosen value, accept damage by two. So now go back to Iron. So now I perplex Iron's attack to a 12. He picks up an ultra heavy and I um, mean, he already picks up a heavy and now Iron is able to do uh, an additional three damage on top of his normal damage. So now Iron for his melee attack is a 12, six for 50 points for Iron and 50 points for 10. That's a hundred points. <laughs> Now, note, you can easily say, hey, Dark Logos, I can spend 100 points and get like a Supergirl or a Coriander or something like that and have very similar stats, longer dials, blah, 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 blah. And I fully understand that. And I will give you kudos for seeing that. Uh, but when I start looking at 10, again, this is probably one you want maybe two or three of, depending on um, how you feel about Metal Men. Uh, this is very OP with Metal Men. Now, I wish it did work with robots, because if it did work with robots, then definitely this is OP. This is Wanda with Tomb all over again. Uh, but other than that, this is this is good stuff. Willpower up front. He can get where he needs to go. It, with the attack value of a 9, that's sort of whiz kids realizing, like, yep, yeah, he's not going to hit that often. So the Force Blast is nice, so he can just bounce people around. All right and let's go okay occultist here we go why why occultist because this is the uh the research assistant for freaking mystical it's so bad like this this is broken this is what i complained to whiz kids about back in web of spider-man having a character this cheap with a keyword a generic keyword at that uh, and a strong generic keyword makes the whole keyword more imbalanced. And, and it's not hard to make a mystical team. It's really not hard to make a mystical team. Mystical and scientist are by far the most newer player generic uh, keywords that anyone can play with. For 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 non generic, it's easily Justice League and Avengers. If it, with the amount of stuff from from those teams, we were flooded with it. Okay. Uh, a while ago it was X Men, which is sort of funny. A couple of years ago it was it was X Men. Look look how times are changing. But anyway, you you go back and you look at a special power, um, blood magic. When an adjacent friendly character takes damage from an opponent's attack, put uh, a number of blood tokens on that friendly character's card equal to the damage taken. Not not the attack, just the damage taken. Oh, did you did you take four damage? Four blood magic tokens imagine this on titano just wait i'm getting to it even if this power is lost that friendly character may be given a free action remove one blood token use perplex targeting itself yeah just just imagine this with dormammu uh, uh imagine this with dr strange uh, uh, uh imagine this with felix faust uh, imagine this with insert broke figure here Ah, uh, oh, Ghost Rider? Hmm, I think so. So, so now, not only do does the occultist give me enhancement, but if you do stupid damage to me, and I have a deep dial, at any point in time, I can be like, you know what? It's a free action. Removing blood magic. 
I perplex up myself until, you know, hey, I have perplex. You, you, oh, so, so, so you have, and this isn't, um, this is not unique. Okay. There's, there's, there's not, if this has already happened. Okay. Like, unless, you know, there, there is no one instance of this. So let's say you have three occultists, three occultists. Okay. On your team and Dr. Strange, because why not? And you have Eclipso as your entity, because why not? And it's on Dr. Strange. All right. So that's your team. Dr. Strange, con exclusive, Dr. Strange, Eclipso, three occultists. I know it's below uh 300 points but we're we're just doing it for examples here you you then you know dr strange is up there doing his d20 bs all over the place it looks like a cow farm okay that's how dirty this is okay and then your opponent is able to get lucky and get that one hit in boom dr strange takes three damage oh dr strange is taking three damage oh, oh, oh. now it's like blood magic, blood magic, blood magic. Doctor Strange now has nine freaking blood magic cards. And don't forget, you have three enhancements right next to you. So the following turn, he rolls. Guess what? I can I got improved targeting. See you wherever the heck you are. I'm going to perplex up my attack three times. And I'm going to use my entity power to allow me to do blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to do this. I get this other stat upped and nuke you. Have a good day. Now, note, this can easily get a rat it, and I really hope it does. And I really hope I'm wrong. But usually it's like, if not already done by this effect, that's usually there. But this is open ended. So, yeah, what just just the secondary market, mark my words, this is a common that will go from a dollar to a dollar fifty in piece when the market finally finally settles because it's too stupid. And it does. And, and here's here's the other thing. Um, and I know it's an adjacent friendly character, but you got freaking enhancement. You got freaking enhancement. Oh, also. If, if you get hit by energy explosion, now all these stupid occultists now have perplex. It's, it's dumb. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. I, I just don't like it. But it's, it's strong, so I got to tell you about it. Now, let, it, for 20 points, this is OP for Mystical. Now, let's move on to Black Cat. Another for the points, this is OP, except it gets to rub the back of two keywords. It's it, it doesn't decide, you know, it's not fully committed to one keyword or the other. It's still testing the waters, deciding if it wants to put a ring on animal or a ring on mystical. But, you know, animal's a little crazy when the moon's out. And mystical, you know, it, it keeps trying to do those blood sacrifices. And, you know, you can't always be down with that. You know, so, but Black Cat has some problems let's look at let's let's look at why black cat has some problems and why that's going to cause problems for you or are you going to cause problems for your opponent first off 13 points with those generic keywords that's wrong that's so wrong in so many ways um because you can easily stack a ton of these little black cats to get theme bonus to do to pick map and also uh, you can't get theme prop but to pick map on a lot of these teams is ridiculous and who knows you might be able to take an animal and add it on to another team and make it a, a theme team or a mystical team and a mystical figure and add it on to another team and be part of a theme team who knows i'm not whiz kids and i don't have magical psychic powers right now but um this figure is two clicks deep which is you saying you're doing better than henry and you're cheaper than henry okay now he has improved movement ignores hindering and ignores characters which is really a lot of mobility with stealth and super senses that's pretty good and you have a special power now your attack is crap at a seven and your damage is crap at a one and then on second click your attack is six and your damage is zero but if you have a magical way of doing in cap yeah you can hail mary and go for it might as well, or you're able to have a magical way to give your, you know, all your figures poison. That would be great too, you know, like Gizmo. But you could tell, 
you could tell I play Gizmo way too much. Because every time I look at figures like this, it's like, yeah, you know, this is good. And if I can get some some broke stuff with you, then yeah, with Gizmo, you're going to be OP, my buddy. OP. Anyway, uh, going on. Uh, here we go. So, first trait, your trait. When, when a black cat crosses your path once per turn, when black cat moves through a square occupied by opponent's character, opposing character, that character gets a bad luck token. Give that character a bad luck token. Which is, you already know, this is, this is already bad. Okay, bad luck follows as a special power. Black cat can use probability control but only to re-roll the attacks of opposing characters anywhere on the map with a bad luck token. Now, this this is really good if your team has a hyper carry. And, and what I mean, a hyper carry, not in like, I do tons of damage, but it's able to taxi a bunch of people. So, or, or a hyper taxi. Okay, because then you just have these cats just run through. Okay, but here's, I'll explain to you even more why, why this is OP. Uh, when Black Cat uses probability control after actions resolve, remove all bad luck tokens from that opposing character's card. Now, let's explain why this is OP. Again, just like the occultist, this is not if this effect hasn't already been done. So, if you have three Black Cats, one Black Cat goes through, let's say, uh, a third of your force, the other black cat a third uh, a different third and the final black cat you know the last third okay so here's what'll happen your opponent attacks okay they have a black cat token on their card your opponent attacks boom all right cool now they hit then you probably black cat one they hit probably black cat two they hit probably black cat three they miss one token is removed. Yes. Welcome to English, whiz kids. You don't think this stuff through. So bad. So bad right now. So bad. So at 13 points, expect to see your friends pack at least three of these because it's it's dumb. And oh, oh, guess what? When the next character attacks, it goes through the same thing. So, you know, let's just say you don't go super gonzo with it. Okay. And and you only pack two. That's 26 points to make your opponent re-roll twice. Yeah. That's, yeah, I'll exchange, I'll exchange a power action to possibly functionally screw you over real bad. And then, oh gosh, if you got like six of these... And in like a thousand point game and you had like something to give a bunch of animals free move like, you know, uh, Alyosha Craven and, you know, where it was able to get a, a, a bunch of mobility against the Colossal, a Colossal screwed, a Colossal straight screwed because you, you're just one token on them and all six of them can proc. All six of them can proc. That's that's bad. That's Brett. That that's just bad. So like like I said, this is OP, occultist OP, like so OP. It, it does not belong in this game. And what's funny is, is that in the same set we have unique modifier. We need they should have also came up with the idea of unique effect or once per turn effect because they used that wording previously. I don't know why they didn't use it now. I don't know. They're like, well, it's not a lot of standard characters. We can get wacky because these are our own guys. It's like you they put the put the pipe down, whiz kids. Stop putting that weed in that crack pipe, whiz kids. Stop smoking weed in that crack pipe. All right, so let's uh let's keep moving on to our next magical abuser, Druid. Now, I do like the fact that the black cat and the cultists have various names. And the druid has various names as well. Now, here's the other funny thing. He's also animal and mystical. Now, at 18 points, not as abusive as Black Cat, but you get a mat for, for five points more, you get an extra click of life. <laughs> and you get to start with a nine attack. <laughs> 
Three clicks of stealth, three clicks of shape change. Then you have entangling roots. Druid, can you smoke cloud? Opposing characters occupying squares with these smoke cloud markers must break away and can't automatically break away with a range value of five. Now, again, why is this OP? Let's see. For, for power action, I force you to break away from my smoke cloud. And guess what? I get six freaking squares of smoke cloud. Guess what? If I pack two of these, I'm able to alternate back and forth. Now, I have a standard range of six, so yeah, I got to get up into the fight. But really, do you want to waste an attack trying to kill a druid? Really? With Superman, with the Ultra Heavy right behind there, are you really going to go and attack druid? No, you're not going to attack druid. You're, you're really not, unless you're trying to score easy points. Now, you want to poison Druid, of course, but no, not attack. Now, the other cool thing is, is like, let's go back to our cheapo Batman, is that now I have Smoke Cloud that I can have cheapo Batman jump into or be in or whatever, and now he can bounce around the board. So there, there's tons of cool stuff you can go with. 18 points for Shape Chain Stealth Smoke Cloud, and, and it has, it stops, you know, improved movement. Uh, that's good. That's, it's the net as a power action on steroids. So I, I can't, I can't see a problem with it. Now I will say this range, major limitation, but we already talked about that. You can, you can find ways to buff his range. That's not a problem. That's really not a problem. So as, as we go on, um, this, this, this figure is dumb. This figure is dumb. And and why can't it be dumb? And no one will care? Because it's not a freaking real character. It's some generic crap that WizKids made up. This this should have been OP stuff. This is what we should have got for Halloween. Give, you know, what was that one guy they were complaining about on Dial H? Uh, killer Moth. Where, get, get rid of this crap. Give me a crappy Killer Moth. Do you know how many Clix fans would have sung the praises of WizKids for that? Is there something up with his licensing or something? Or just WizKids hates that figure? I don't, or hates that character. I don't know. You know, or, or is it DC that hates that, that character? I don't know. It's whatever. Going on. Let's look at the witch. Because all these are just dumb. Now, the witch has a unique modifier. Oh my gosh. Who would have thought? That you can have enhancement now. Now, please, please note my, please note my anger, not not my rage, I, and I don't want to fall into the stand, you know, the standard, you know, nerd rage or angry black man type thing. But let's let's look at it. Occultist, twenty points, three clicks deep, willpower, one click of enhancement. Okay, which twenty points, twenty points. Okay, monster and mystical keyword. Okay, but has the unique which can use enhancement. Okay, so all right now, I I, I could get, okay you can use enhancement, but we compare that to the occultist, which the occultist has the dumb blood magic, which technically gives me perplex and enhancement for the same points. Now note the witch is still OP. Why is the witch still OP? Sidestep. And then also the unique modifier when adjacent to a friendly character with a mystical keyword makes a ranged combat attack, you know, modify their attack by one, which is a unique modifier. Now, you might say, but Dark Logos, I have to take damage with the occultist. With this, I don't want to take damage. That's fine. You can also say, hey, Dark Logos, don't you like Super Scroll? Doesn't this help Super Scroll? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it, it, it does help Super Scroll. You're right. You're, you're calming me down. But this is crap. This is this is crap. This is this is this is not in any sort of way balanced with the occultist. Any sort of way balanced with the occultist. OK, so again, people will will play these. All right. And, and they're, they're going to play the witch. And, and she's not bad. And please let me understand. I'll let you understand. She's not bad. But again, when you're looking in the set and you're comparing other stuff with other stuff, the, it's easy to say that the occultist stands out. And they're in the same rarity. They're the same rarity. 
it, it would be different if it was like the occultist is an uncommon. Then I'd be like, aha, aha, or or a rare, you know. But it's not. It's not. Uh. Anyway, going on warlock. So uh, Warlock gets the battle magic, and he's 20 points too. Now, the Warlock actually has, he, he pretty much is getting the good stats here. And that's why you're paying 20 points for five range, you know, phasing, nine attack, combat reflexes, two damage. For 20 points, I played with enough pogs. That's pretty good. You know, not take home the mama good, but it's pretty good. Now you get in power, which is, it, he doesn't fly. So at least he can be carried. He has phasing to get into position, so that's nice. What's his unique modifier? Friendly characters with a mystical keyword makes a close combat attack. Modify their attack value by plus one. That's not bad. And again, it works just like the witch. Okay, cool. But again, when you're in the same set as the occultist and the freaking black cat and uh, the druid, I'm sorry. I'll take those uh, abominations unto God. I'll take those over, over your warlock and your witch. Thank you, good sir, good madam, good day. Okay? Alright, so let's let's go ahead and move on to Uncommons. And at the rate that I'm going, I'm probably going to wrap up Uncommons and I'm going to end this section. So, you know, it's been a long time since I did a three-parter. This might actually be a three-parter. Now, this set is, it has a lot of game-changing stuff. And I'm, like I said, I'm not talking about everything, but I am going to talk about a good chunk of this set. All right, so let's look at Superman. You got the shifting focus, yay. Now, you might say, well, hey, Dark Logos, why is this one, you know, a consideration when we had the hypersonic speeder one? Well, first off, you can play him on your reporter teams um, and also your Justice League teams, which you can put on him on any of your Justice League teams. But the uh, reporter keyword, I think, is new. I think this is the one that has reporters, so you can start with him on your reporter team. Next up, you have Walls Will Not Stop Justice. He gets to improve movement, destroy blocking. So he can charge through blocking. Now, this is good. Now, going on to use my strength. When, when making an uh, a t object attack, increase Superman's damage dealt by one. So, yay. So he could pick up a heavy and have it be like ultra heavy. Give him a free action if he's not holding an object to destroy an adjacent wall or square of blocking terrain. So it's for free. He can do be like, boom, punch the wall. Okay, so he has a one in three chance of getting, I'm sorry, uh, a one in three chance of not getting an object. A three through four, he can get uh, a light object, which is equivalent to a heavy. And a five through six, he gets a head, standard heavy, which is equivalent to an ultra heavy. Okay, so when you look at that, just look at that with the 11 attack uh, and then picking up a heavy and then being able to make uh, a heavy uh, it, it's, it's pretty good. Um, now here's the other thing that's a little OP about him. Uh, combine him with the barrier, uh, with the wall construct or just barrier. He can roll to destroy the barrier for free. Now you might say, well, dark logos, I'm exchanging a power action so that he can do a free action and blow up my wall. Why would I do that? Well, let's look at this. Your DPS will go up. All right, that's one. Uh, two is that if you play Mr. Uh, Nobody and he jacks all your objects that's on the other side of the map, then guess what? You have a way of getting objects back. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just throwing this out there. Like, is this a natural counter to a very strong piece? No, but it, it gives you options. And, and, and that's all I can say is it gives you options. And if you're able to do other shenanigans... You know, you can easily drop the object. Now I have plus one defense. Ha ha ha. You know, that that's you could do that too. Okay, so is this bad? No. You got Superman ally on him? Bam, wild card. That's what's up. All right, let's keep going. Uh, next up is Superman Prime. All right, so why this Superman? Because he's dumb strong. <laughs> dumb strong. <laughs> not not broke strong, dumb strong. Can't hold himself back strong. Okay, so you're like, 100 points, this isn't even anywhere close to Coriander. Wait for it. Okay, so hypersonic speed for two clicks, running shot for two clicks, and charge for his last two clicks. Six range, flight, uh, standard attack uh, symbol, in dom, 
three damage blank. He starts off with invincible, then impervious, and then toughness. Now, six clicks, 100 points. I know you're not sold yet. But here we go. Ivy's influence. Now, this does work with that poison Ivy prime, which is sort of dumb. But uh, Ivy's influence. When building your force, you may choose a friendly character that is named Poison Ivy or possess mind control on its starting click, which uh, all those dang mermaids or at least Lori Lamaris or whatever. And this is how it all links together. Okay, Superman has the keywords of that character in addition to his own. Now, 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 listen to me. Listen to me now and hear me later. Combine that with, uh, wait, that's not Superman. And you have keywords on this guy for a theme team. And it's not DC exclusive. So as long as I have like a shield guy with freaking mind control on his first click, I can put this Superman on the shield team. Do you see the stupid that's coming? Do you see the stupid? Okay. And he has hypersonic speed. Oh, hold on. Wait, wait. So if I put this, this Superman on my team with my professor X and my Hope Summers, the Superman's an X-Man, and I can bring in another Superman, possibly, with the weight that's not Superman trait, that's a little bit better than this 100-point 100 100 crappy figure? Well, yeah! Oh, but it gets better. Okay, so, yes, I'll fight for you, is other trait. Superman begins the game with a control token on his card. At the beginning of your turn, roll a D6 on the result of one, uh, I guess one through three, remove a control token from his car, this card. On the result of four through six, put a control token on this card. So he has a 50-50 chance of having a control token on or off. When Superman has no control tokens, uh, opposing characters can, uh, sorry, when Superman has no control tokens, opposing characters can use mind control, but only to target him. So, guess what? If you have friendly mind control, screw you, buddy. <laughs> you can't. You only can target Superman. Do I want to... Do you want mind control protection? Go ahead. Play Superman. Play... The, it, if you're in a huge point game, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it now. 500 points and higher. Complete mind control protection. Okay, here we go. Give Superman a free action. Remove a control token to modify his combat values by plus one until your next turn. So, okay, you're, 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 you're saying, well, Dark Logos, he's not as sucky now because on his first click, he's on 11 movement, 11 attack, 19D, and 4 damage with super strength at 100 points, and he can pick up an ultra heavy. Yes. Yes. Okay, so where, where does this Superman fit in the meta? Your friendly mind control teams, he sort of just says you know, screw you, screw you so hard. Uh, you know, your brother voodoos hate him. Okay. There's so many teams that hate, will hate this figure because it blatantly says right here. And, and again, this is from eight C realms. All right. When Superman has no control tokens, which you can permanently do up opposing characters can use mind control, but only to target him. So if you're going to do an effect that, that targets a friendly to allow them to do stuff that's cool, you know, without them taking action, you have to be like Justin Zephyr. Okay. But, but here, here, here we go. All right. A again, when, when, when you look at, at the influence that this can do, like it shuts down it shuts down figures. It really shuts down figures because on your turn, you can just be like, oh, I got a control token. I need my control protection. I'm going to burn this. It's a free action. Okay, cool. Now I have a seven range. I'm just going to shoot you from here. Like there's, there's so many little tricks that you can do to like get your opponent. Like, it's, 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 it's great. Probably the best and worst prime in in the history of whiz kids it's not that wonderful on that dial it's really not it's lackluster at best it's a c plus really striving hard for the b can't do it but these traits are dumb they are so dumb so dumb so dumb 
And when you start combining him with all the other dumb jank you can do, so dumb, so dumb. <laughs> all right, let's let's keep going. All right, uh, next up is uh, is Batman. You got to shift in focus. This is number 18. You got to study your enemies when opposing character within line of fire hits with an attack. Place a study token on this card. You, you're going to be placing tokens this set. That's that's their theme. They they like placing tokens. Shield, they like making you bystanders. So this is this is sort of in between. Uh, I've discovered what I need to know is his special power. And he says Batman can use Outwit as if he had a range value of 8. When he does, if he removes a study token from this card, he can either counter an additional power on the targeted character. This use of Outwit uh, lasts until your next turn, even if this power is lost. So you can be like, bloop, bloop, I see what I need to go. No, I got an Outwit token. Uh, outwit your defense. And I'm going to outwit your... So I'm going to outwit your super senses. And I'm going to outwit your probability control. Now I'm going to judo flip into better Batman with 12 attack, 3 damage, and punch you in the face. Thank you very much. So that that does have its nice uses because you can sort of sidestep in uh, and then morph into... or Sorry, shifting focus into the other Batman that you need to be. Okay. So, it's okay. It's okay. Now... I want Crazy Jane to be good, but that chick's crazy. Um, that chick's crazy, so I can't. I can't say that. Can't. I can't recommend her. All right. Uh, next up is uh, Minto. Now you have this weird resurrection, which technically is like a ghetto stop click, but it's not. This is. It's a ghetto stop click. Yeah. Uh, the first time, it says Weird Resurrection, the first time Mento would be KO'd this game. Uh, instead, roll 2d6 that can't be re-rolled. Turn him to the click number equal to the result. So, here's the thing. You roll 2d6, your max is 12. Okay? This guy is 5 clicks deep. You don't have a 50-50 chance of him coming back. Just saying. All right, so you know you're you're already at a disadvantage. Okay, so you can't depend on that. Don't depend on that. Okay, next is Mento Intensifier. Mento can use Mind Control and Phase and Teleport. When he uses Mind Control, choose one. He can increase his attack by plus one. I'm uh, sorry, by plus two, or give the hit characters an action token after action is resolved. Now, <clears throat> this is nice because it allows him to uh, get into position. He also has Outwit up front NTK. So after he's finishing doing that, he can get into position uh, later on mid-game to start mind controlling. So with two targets giving him functionally a 12 attack, he has a good chance to hit. Uh, or he can do like an additional lockdown, forcing people to take pushing damage. So it's, it's up to you, the player, to determine what you want to do. Uh, negative man. This can be strong or really really badly played really badly played now let me explain why you have weird resurrection that's okay we already explained that he has five clicks just like steve and dayton so you can't bank on coming back with this next you have the other trait negative spirit give negative man a power action to place adjacent a negative spirit bystander if there's not already one on the map okay now this here is the big thing but we're going to keep going next you have hollow man while a friendly negative spirit is on the map negative man sorry it's not on the map negative man deals penetrating damage while friendly negative spirit is on the map negative man can't be given move actions okay now negative spirit Negative spirit has a trait <laughs> for a bystander. Okay. Uh, 60 seconds. Negative spirit deals penetrating damage. If negative spirit isn't within six squares of a friendly character named Negative Man, immediately KO it. 
negatively charged energy being is his special power. Negatively charged, sorry, negative spirit can use phasing teleport. When he is given a move action, after actions are resolved, he may make a close combat attack as a free action, targeting any one opposing character occupying a square he moved through. Now, where does that sound familiar? Hmm. Hmm. Was it? Yes, it was. It was Phantom Girl. And let's think about this for a moment. I have Perplex with Standard Negative Man. I can perplex up his attack, the Negative Spirits attack, to an 11. I have three Henrys. I zippity doo da five squares, come back by the three Henrys, and now I'm 11 attack, four damage because of the empowers by the Henrys, and the guy that I zip through and hit, I'm going to hit, I'm going to deal penetrating damage to. And oh yeah, don't forget the fact that I also can deal poison from negative man and then also poison from negative man spirit. And oh yeah, the damage from negative man spirit is penetrating. And I have every incentive to push this little bugger to make it zippity doo dah through your guys, hit you, die, and then power action, summon another one so it can do the same exact same thing again. So dumb right now. So dumb. That's, I'm like, like, come on, Wiz Kids. Come on. Don't make it this easy for me. Like, I read this at work and I was half asleep taking my nap during the break. I was reading this. Okay. If I can see this starting off, why why can't Wiz Kids see this? Now note. He's 75 points, and it does. there is no guarantee that this is going to take off whatsoever. But go back to my little commentary about Clark Kent from last episode. I mean, not from last episode, from the uh, World's Finest Review. And I said, this is stupid because Clark Kent generates a Superman with hypersonic speed and does all this dumb stuff. And then, you know, no one's played it. That's fine. I, you know, I could be wrong. People might, might not want to work for that. But... When you understand you have Eva tech where people purposely will go out and push Eva and have Eva die just so they can generate another Eva to do something else. And then you give me this, which is a more offensive version of Eva. And my opponent gets zero points for KOing this sucker. And there's tons of other effects that I could slap on this. Like when this figure is KO'd, like... Like, stuff like that. Like, when a friendly character is KO'd, you get to do blah. When a friendly character moves, you get to do blah. When a fam, you know, like, all your penetrating damage deals plus one damage. Like, it, all these dumb effects that are in, in the game still, or in the game period, going all the way through Golden Age. You, you didn't think about how that was going to stack with this negative spirit? Now, note, some people might say, you're saying this is the hotness, but then you're also crapping on it. What's going on? It's a little too strong. It's just a little too strong. You know, we're we're in a readjustment phase, and then Wiz Kids are like, nah, screw that. More broke stuff. More broke stuff. Alright. Um, let's let's keep going. Uh next up. Um one, two, three. Okay, I thought so. All right, uh, next up we have Allura. And Allura is is nice for the following reasons, her traits. Uh, she comes at 50 and 75 points. The, her 75 points aren't the greatest, but they're not bad either. She has Kryptonian politician and scientist keyword. Uh, her top click is, eh, it's okay. But it's mainly her traits that are good. Political expedi uh, expediency to save new Krypton. Friendly characters with the Kryptonian keyword are wild cards. Think about this more at 75 points than 150. Then Supergirl's mother, Superman's aunt. Unique modifier. When Alora is adjacent to a friendly character named Supergirl or Superman, modify their attack values by plus one. Okay, now. She has hypersonic speed on her 75 point click, precision strike, 17 defense and vulnerability, and 3 damage. I'll take that. 
I'll take that. On a Kryptonian theme team, now my Superman is a wild card. And I have mystics and whatever else. Uh, well, let's not even say Kryptonian theme team. Let's just say I'm just running a, a, a theme team. Or not even theme team. I'm just running a team. And I'm running, you know, now my Superman has, you know, I can give him mystics. I can give my Superman scrolls. Like, think about that. You know, that's that's some stuff. Now, again, we look at our Superman Prime. We look at our Superman Prime. And all of a sudden... It, it comes together. You you start looking at politician and scientist theme teams, and there he is. Their their prime, their <laughs> their prime subject. <laughs> anyway, all right. So let's let's uh, let's move on before I make more bad jokes. Uh, Desaad is good. I'm I'm just gonna say he's good. Uh, no need to go into him. There's a lot of other people that have broken down Desaad. Um, this is the uh, Daniel Joint seal of approval on this one uh, from when I talked to him. It just says, like, the sucker's a beast for his apocalypse team. So um, there's that. Uh, I like Major Force. I think time will tell how good he's going to be. Uh, yeah, just time will tell how good he's going to be. Uh the fact that he has still energy on range and close combat attacks with his special power on click four, it's really, really nice in regen on the last click. And of course, you know, my philosophy, you can't be dependent on regen that only lasts for one click. Uh, but overall, I think that he's, I, I would say he's good. I think you are going to have to be a way better player. Uh, to use him than some other pe- than a lot of other pieces in the set. I'm just gonna be honest. Oh man, uh, copper metalman, like this this dude is dumb. Combat reflexes, shape change, plasticity. Uh, you get the sidestep thing uh, with the metallic. Uh, sorry, with the metalman thing, and then you get sidestep, and then when using shape change, uh, increase her d6 roll by one uh, when you're uh, adjacent or within three squares of another metal man. So you have a 50-50 chance of evading damage at 25 points. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Then you have lead. Uh, lead comes in at 50 points. But, again, like when you start looking at the attack, 10 attack, close combat expert, you really, you know, impervious. Lead is like your front and center figure. That's really the best I could say. Um, you also are able to increase, if you're within three squares of another metal man, pretty much have a 50% chance of getting impervious. So lead and tin together can be really, really strong. Um, but yeah, so that, that's goodness. But we, we have lots of penetrating damage, and so, yeah. All right, anyway, let's uh, keep going. Black uh, Black Briar Thorn, uh, Mystic TA five range, ninety points in Just Society and Mystical. <laughs> yeah, uh, has improved movement, ignores hindering. Also has a special power, Heart of the Briar Patch. Black Briar Thorn can use poison. He may use it normally or instead deal one penetrating damage to all opposing characters within five squares that are occupying hindering terrain. Now. It has to be hindering terrain that your opponents generate because your smoke cloud goes away at the beginning of your turn. Otherwise, Druid in this figure would be awesome. Awesome sauce made from awesome trees. But uh, unfortunately, that's not the case. Now, another resource that would be, again, awesome uh, would be the power plant, which will allow you to use the matter rearranger ring, which you could just jack with your opponent so hard as long as your character had no action tokens. A little bit more situational, a little bit harder to pull off, but, but mind you, uh, it would allow this effect to be pretty much guaranteed. All right, uh, I, I, like I said, it's good. It's, it's really good. I just think you might have to work a little bit harder uh, than the average person might want to, uh, but I do see potential there. Next up is Blue Beetle, Ted Cord. A.K.A. Ted Cord, A.K.A. What's up between you and Booster Gold? Are you really best friends? You don't act like it most of the time. 
Uh, you got the Birds of Prey, Justice League International Scientist, Super Buddies keyword, which I don't even know why you bother with Super Buddies because everybody with the Super Buddies keyword has a Justice League International keyword. I don't know. Maybe there's some person from some cartoon that's a Super Buddy but not a Justice League International person. I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so you have, uh, I'll let you know when I see one, Booster. Uh, Blue Beetle can use Perplex. He may use an additional time each turn if one of these... Uh, one of these uses targets himself or a friendly character named Booster Gold. Now, this is the funny thing. This is this is a real funny thing. Technically, you could run two of these Blue Beetles or any number of Booster Golds, and these two Blue Beetles could target them each themselves, then target the other Blue Beetle, and then... Uh, Oh, no, never mind. I Because I thought it was like an additional time each turn. Never mind. So you get two uses of Perplex, so never mind. So as long as you have a Blue Beetle or a Booster Gold on your team, you're good. I really do uh, recommend, I think it was like the Batman set, Booster Gold. I like that Booster Gold a lot. All right. But overall, <clears throat> overall, it's good stuff. Next up is Jason Blood. Jason Blood really makes me wonder why is he here? Because we had a really good technically Etrigan in the Flash, but a eh, you know anyway you have the gone gone form of man rise the demon Etrigan. Uh, give Jason Blood a free action. I like this. If you begin your turn, uh, if you begin your turn on the map, replace him with Etrigan. Uh, of the same on the same click, uh, on the same click number. Now. This means, like, your first turn, you're just like, oof, Etrigan. Now, this is a big deal depending on the theme teams that you're running. Uh, and I have to look at Etrigan's keywords because uh, if Etrigan has monster or something like that and you don't really want to use a monster theme team, then that's cool. Uh, but if, if you're like, hey, I want to run a Gotham City team, I don't think Etrigan would have that keyword. So you'd be able to pop Jason Blood in, then boom, have him turn into Etrigan. Then it's uh, Monsters Gone Wild. Uh, then uh, you have the defensive power that he starts off with. Is Jason Blood can use Super Senses. Adjacent friendly characters that share a keyword with him can use Super Senses, but only succeed on a roll of six. Now, this is nice because you can give characters that don't have Super Senses uh, Super Senses. And also, if you have the ability to add keywords to Jason Blood, key element there, uh, you are also then able to to give other characters that shouldn't really benefit from it to benefit from it. Uh, it's But again, you only succeed on a six, so that's nice. But uh, again, you know, it's still a little abusive. Not as crazy stupid as these generics. These wacky generics. Uh, but it's pretty good. Unravel your simple magics. Jason Blood can use Outwit and Probability Control. Adjacent friendly characters can't be targeted by opposing characters, probability control. Now that's really strong. Be just saying your opponent can't prob you, yeah. Uh, and uh, you have outwit and prob yourself, and then you shut down your opponent's prob on you. Oh yeah, that's good. Uh, the wizard, uh, because the, you just can't get any better than this guy for some people. Uh, 50 points for a prob in six range. This isn't bad, but we'll find out it's not the best. There's something better in this set. Uh, but then you can go prop out with perplex, which gives you a really nice Swiss Army knife, and then enhancement and power on your last click. Now I like this because if you need to sort of play around with your dial, you can't. Uh, but his trait is baller. Uh, poof! The wizard sh uh, can use shape change. When he uses shape change and succeeds, you may place him within four squares. And in the square you previously occupied, immediately place a tiger bystander token. Now, this is great because a tiger has charge, 10, 10 attack, blades, and toughness, and one damage. So you get to, like, actually, like, create little monsters for free. Then he has special power for three clicks. Illusions hide your true surroundings. When the wizard is occupying hindering terrain or adjacent to blocking terrain, the wizard can't be targeted by non-adjacent opposing characters. So pure and simple, he can pretty much just do what he wants to do and live in color. And for you old enough to remember that line, props to you. 
so it's uh, it's really solid uh, because he has built-in survivability. Uh, he also has a utility of multiple powers. You can get him up there in the midst of things uh, by keeping him, you know, in hindering or by a wall or whatever else, and he can stay alive. Okay, so that's really great. Uh, and then if you need to push to outwit or push to perplex, you can. I would not really advise pushing to enhancement. Really, your first three clicks are your money clicks because that's really what's keeping you alive. Once you get on mind control, just like just accept that he's about to die. 50 points, really great utility figure. And then also the dang tiger. Built-in shape change, too, and a tiger. Like magic tricks. Like this is the mystical set. Why? Because whiz kids hate science. That's why. They hate science. Actually, I'll take that back. Science does not necessarily have to be dynamically opposed to mysticism, for they, the science measures the material world, and mystical nature would measure the non-material world. Science would only has the only has capabilities of measuring what is in the atomic spectrum and, and the dimensions of, of matter, whereas anything that transcends time and space. Uh, or uh, otherworldly, technically, or, or uh, actually, you can even argue sort of interdimensionally, uh, depending on your theological out view, would fall under into a mystical category because then you would have some sort of uh, transdimensional energy that would be able to interact with matter to make it act independent of its normal rules because it's being influenced upon by a superseding effect that is not natural. So since it's an anomaly, it could not normally be measured by scientific method. So anyway, that's 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 just my thoughts. Anyway, going on, you, you can sort of see how groupthink can get you because um, I'm used to be like, science fights magic and magic fights science because they're op opposed. And really, it's not. It's just, there's actually just cultural things that are going on and, and perceptions of the nature of humanity. Uh, but anyway, going on. Speaking of mystic BS, Apprentice, more generics. Gosh, this dude. Okay, uh, stealth, willpower, special power. The special power is stupid. Spellcasting prodigy. Apprentice can use perplex, but only target other friendly characters. Now, at 25 points, is he any occultist? No. But you get. you don't have to take damage to get a perplex for 25 points. Now you might say, but I, but Dark Logos, I have Jimmy Olsen. True, you do have Jimmy Olsen, but does Jimmy Olsen have willpower and stealth? I don't think so, buddy. Not up front. So he goes into end cap and energy shield deflection. But again, if you're at that stage, run and hide. He is a one-click wonder. Okay, you're going to get six range for your perplex. You're not doing anything else than that. If you ever have to attack with this sucker, I hope you have a magic trick. And then, of course, the demon. I feel chipped because I like monsters. But uh, he has the same power as the apprentice. He's five points more. Same range. The only reason he's he costs more is because he has a three damage and a two damage versus the apprentice's one damage, which I would be willing to take that... Just that one damage for his perplex only being able to target. Oh, but he has a perplex. Demon can uh, perplex, but only target opposing characters. So you have the apprentice summon the demon, and then they do different things. They they one uh, messes with your opponent, and the other one helps you. But I'd rather have, I'd rather have the demon have like the spellcasting prodigy power. But anyway, all right. So this is the end of part one. I know I've went over an hour. My, I, I'm sorry. Like I said, there's a lot of goodness. Go ahead and follow me into part two, and uh, we'll, we'll, I'll meet you there. Uh, if, if you don't meet me there and you're like, hey, I got stuff to do, you can follow me on Twitter at StartOverPod. It came from outer space and told me, man, you know, Dark Logo's putting in work this time. Preach, preacher! Uh, so, uh, there we go. You can email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, that's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. If you wish to opine, keep it pithy, keep it interesting, keep it, uh, hmm, 
different, baby. Uh, just send me your emails. What do you think of this set so far? Um, what do you think of you know my commentary and whatever else? Uh, you can also buy my shirt uh, from the link below. You can check out the blog at Starting Over Podcast. Uh, dot blogspot.com and, and uh, when I say about buying my shirt it's in the uh, dibbly do uh, ripped off from PBS idea ditch the idea channel from uh, below the the actual show in, in the show notes there uh, that's it all right see you in uh, part two